Hey everyone, Nate Bowery here with another Questional.com Photoshop video tutorial. In this image, I'd like to show you how to color correct images using three different methods. The first of which, I'm going to take a very short and dirty way of, of doing things. I'm going to use a color blending mode to see if we can't go ahead and fix the image that way. It's going to be fast and dirty, not usually the best source either. So after that, I'd like to go ahead and use the levels. It's not going to be an absolute color correct image. But when you're looking for something fast and quick, there's no better way to do it than levels. Alright, and then after those two, I'm going to go ahead and use my color pickers and my color balance to fully correct the image by the numbers. Meaning no matter what visual impairings you might have, or however calibrated your monitor is, it's always going to turn out well. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. First here, I've got my image here. And as you can see, there's a pretty heavy magenta color cast here that we should go ahead and fix. Alright. So just to maintain a completely non-destructive style, let's just use our adjustment layers here. And the first I'm going to try is, actually, you know what, let me go ahead and start over here. Going back to my color bucket here, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Option or Alt key if you're using a PC. And I'm going to attempt to find a 50% neutral gray. And it's going to be difficult to see over the magenta color cast, so let's see how well we do. I'm going to assume that this pigeon is going to be a, is going to be a nice middle gray. So let's go ahead and try that. Alright, so I'm going to create my new layer, and with my bucket selected, I'm just going to fill that in. Nice image, huh? Now I'm going to hit Command-I or Control-I on the PC, and I'm going to go ahead and invert that image to what you see now. Alright, and with that selected, let's go ahead and try... Let's try color first. Let's see how this goes. And it's a bit much, a nice sepia-toned image, and I'm going to lower the opacity probably to around 50% or so. And you know, that's not looking too good. Not as, hope, not as great as I was hoping for. So let's go ahead and put that back to 100. And instead of using color, let's try soft light and see how that looks. I always love to use soft light. That might be a little bit much. Let's tone it down to around, around 80% or so. All right. Well, there's method one. Nice, dirty way to do it. Take that off and on. There's my before and my after. All right. So let's try, let's try our second method using levels. I'm going to go to my adjustments layer and select the levels here. And by hitting Control or Command, I'm sorry, it's Option. It's either Option or Alt. I'm going to hit Option 3, and that's going to bring me to my red, 4 to my green, and 5 always to my blue. And as you can see, there's a lot of color I'm not using here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this right slider on my red channel. I'm going to put it forward. And as you can see, midway through, I'm going to get some interesting results. So you're not really going to want to look at the image until you're completely done moving your sliders in. And what I'm doing here is I'm simply moving the slider to about where the color starts. This color right here, I can hold down my Option or Alt key to see exactly what I'm clipping off. You know, I don't really care about that color too much, meaning all everything I see there, everything that's black, is simply going to white. I'm losing that color information, which I'm not really too worried about. It's unimportant anyway. And I'm going to do that to both sides, and as well to my blue. Now my blue, on the other hand, I'm going to hold down Alt, and I care about that information. That's rather important detail, so I'm not going to adjust that slider at all. I'm simply going to adjust the left side here and bring it back up bushes, nobody cares about that. I'm going to put it around there, so. Alright. And as you can see, that's definitely better than what we had before. It's still not phenomenal, but when you compare our two results, it's definitely looking nicer. Alright, so there is our levels. Nice, quick, and easy. Alright, so let's go ahead and get a bit more complicated using our color pickles. Pickles? I just say pickles. Color pickers. Five stars for pickles. Alright. So here's my color picker. I'm going to use my color sampler tool, allowing me, allowing me to select three different colors here. Now there's a method of doing my, my madness here. The first, I'm going to select what I what appears to be a very dark, not a complete bat, black, but very close. Alright, so I'm thinking that right there is going to look about nice. I mean, here's my info palette here. I'm just going to go ahead and scoot that over out of the way for just a bit. Close that. Alright, now my second is going to be my highlight. I like to work in this order for a couple of reasons, and I'll tell you in just a second. I'm going to look for what appears to be a close to white color, and I'm thinking around well, that looks nice. I'm going to assume his shirt is white here. My Photoshop teacher told me to never assume, but I'm going to ignore him in this instance. Alright, and now the most important color picker is going to be to locate a neutral gray. And in this image here, I think I'm going to... 50% or so, I'm going to assume the sidewalk is a nice gray, midway through. Alright, so let's 
get our info panel over here a little bit so we can work with our adjustment layers. I'm going to go to adjustment layer and this time I'm going to work with my color balance. Now I like to use color balance mainly for a couple of reasons. It's, it's a very powerful panel. It's also a very underrated panel. No one seems to use it as much as I do. So let's go ahead and use this here. All right. Now I'm going to look at my image and I'm going to think that my shadows are going to be my least important color, my highlights being second most important, and my midtones, as usual, are always going to be my more important colors there. So my main assumption is going to be keep the neutrals, don't worry so much about the shadows or highlights. Alright, so I'm going to start on my shadows first, and as you can see here, 18 is what I've got, that's my lowest, and 42 being my highest. Now because these are the shadows, I'm going to attempt to get this number as close to 18 as possible. So I'm looking at my blue here, I'm going to take my blue slider and add a bit of yellow there. And as you can see, my blue slider is going down, and I'm going to get that to 18 as close. 17, that works fine for me, I'm not too worried about it. Then green, go down, there we go. Alright, you can start seeing some subtle image, image corrections here. And next I'm going to work on my highlights, that's my second most important. So I'm going to select highlights here, and we're working with this one down here. Number, uh, I'm sorry, number two. That's where I put it. And now I'm going to want to look at my highest number, in this case 255. And that's a bit high. My, my goal was to look for a color of white that wasn't completely blown out. This might be the worst. This might not end up well. But let's go ahead and see what happens. So 255 being my highest, I'm going to get my green going. See if I can't get that up to 250. I'm going to go 1, just so it's not completely blown out. Then my red, increase that up. It's getting pretty high. There we go. All right. Maybe just a little bit more. Perfect. All right. And now, most importantly, my midtones. And, of course, I'm going to be looking for my middle one. In this case, 558. Uh, and, you know, they're pretty close, so this is going to be a quick adjustment. I'm just going to take my blue, lower it down a little bit, and as you can see, the numbers are going to meet me in the middle. There we go. Maybe up my green a bit. There we go. That works for me. All right. So I'm going to put this panel back in here, just so we have a little bit more real estate room. All right, and there we have three methods. You know, that turned out a lot better than I thought. There's still a bit of a green color cast now that I'm looking at this. So I'm going to go back into my color balance, and maybe lower the green just a slight bit. There we go, that looks better. All right, so we're looking at our layers here. I'm gonna hit F to go to full screen mode, spacebar to reposition my image, and shift tab to bring back just to the right side. Here's our original image here. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control or Command if you're using the Mac, and take these color pickers, and we're just gonna drag them off the canvas so they don't have to look at them. Goodbye info, don't need you back again. All right. So the first thing we did was select a neutral color, invert that color, and then put that on a soft light blending mode. It was a bit much, so we lowered the opacity, and that gave us what we see here. Not, not phenomenal, nothing special, definitely better ways to do it. Our next attempt involved a levels, in which we simply took each color channel and heightened the color on all of them, just sliding them over so we're using our maximum color quality definitely turned out better than our previous, but it's still nothing fancy. Alright, and here's our color balance. Took each color picker individually, grabbed our highlights, our shadows, and our neutrals, and we adjusted the color from there, making sure each of our color channels matched up in the end, hopefully by getting a near correct number. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit questional.com and ask your question there. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later.